Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I will show you how to create a beautiful and responsive custom sidebar header for your WordPress website using Elementor Page Builder. The sidebar header that we will be creating has all the essential features that a professional website needs such as a vertical nav menu, a search bar, and a dark mode switch. Not only that, but this sidebar header is also highly interactive, for instance, click on the toggle icon and watch it collapse and expand. In this tutorial, we will be creating three different versions of an Elementor sidebar header. In the first version, when a user clicks on a navigation menu item, the relevant section will automatically scroll into view. Additionally, when the user scrolls through the web page using the mouse scroll wheel, the corresponding menu item will be highlighted. This feature makes it ideal for use on a multi-section landing page, providing a smooth and user-friendly navigation experience. In the second version, when a user clicks on a navigation menu item, the relevant section will load instantly on the page without reloading the entire page, making it perfect for an admin dashboard. The third version is similar to the second, but with a key difference. When a user clicks on a navigation menu, it will load an entirely new page, rather than just loading a section. This feature is perfect for use in situations where you want to navigate to a different page. In order to create exact same header as shown in the intro, you will require two things. The first requirement is the Elementor plugin with a pro plan. If you don't already have one, please consider purchasing through my affiliate link given in the video description. The price of the product will be the same, whether you buy through my link or directly, but buying through my link will support this channel. The second thing is that, I have explained everything in great detail but make sure to watch the entire video without skipping. Folks, if you are looking for an easy solution, worry not, I have a solution for you. I'm offering all three versions of the ready-made templates for sale in my Gumroad shop at a very affordable price which is less than $5 each. And if you want to buy all three versions together, you can get them for a limited time at only $9.99, a massive 65% discount from the regular price. If you want to save even more on my already affordable templates, then here is exciting news for you. To celebrate the opening of my Gumroad store, I am currently offering a 50% discount on most of my template products, but that's not all. If you watch the full video without skipping, you will discover an additional 20% discount coupon code, bringing your total savings to an amazing 70% off. So don't miss out on this limited time offer, head to my Gumroad store now and take advantage of these unbeatable deals. Once you will complete your order, you'll receive a zip file containing the template. To import the template into your WordPress website, first, extract the zip file containing the template to any location on your computer. Inside the extracted folder, you will find three different folders, each containing a variation of the JSON template file with slight variations in the default header conditions, as well as you will also get a README instruction manual. To find the best variation that suits your needs, refer to the README instruction manual. Next, log into your WordPress dashboard and make sure that you have both the Elementor Pro and Elementor Free version plugins installed. Next, before importing the sidebar header, you need to optimize two settings in your Elementor plugin. To do so, hover over the Elementor and click on the Settings option. Now switch to the Advanced tab and enable the Unfiltered File Upload setting. Next, switch to the Experiment option and you will find an experiment called Improved CSS Loading. This experiment is enabled by default on your website and according to Elementor, once you will enable this experiment, they will not load the unused CSS on your page, thereby improving page speed. However, activating this experiment frequently results in the failure to load some required CSS, resulting in a ruined page appearance and layout, so deactivating this experiment is the best option. To deactivate this experiment, select the inactive option from the improved CSS loading experiment, and save the changes. After that, hover over the template tab and click on the theme builder option. Now click on the sidebar menu with the name of the header. Next, click on add new link in the top right corner of the window. 
Once you will click on the same link, then this pop-up window will appear. Now, click on my template section, and then click on the import template button. Next, locate the folder where you have extracted the zip file. Now, select the JSON file of the template variation you want to import, and then click this button. Once the template is successfully imported, it will appear in the list with the name Elementor sidebar header version 1. If for some reason the template does not appear in the list after uploading, you can try syncing the library by clicking on the sync library icon. This will refresh the template list and make the imported template appear. If the problem still persists, you can try re-uploading the same template. This should resolve the issue, and the template should appear in the list. Next, using this insert button, insert the same template. When it asks you to apply the settings, simply click the apply button. Folks, the process of importing all versions of the Elementor sidebar header template is exactly the same, so you can follow the same steps for each one. That's it, you now have a beautiful sidebar header that's ready to be customized to your liking, don't worry, if you're not sure how to do it, I'll be explaining everything in the next section of the video, so keep watching. To begin the customization, open the Elementor Navigator tool. Now here, each element has been given a distinct name so that you can easily recognize them by their names. For instance, to change the logo image, simply select the logo image element using the navigator and change it under the content tab. Now to change the logo text, select the logo text element and edit the text under the content tab. If you want to show uniform text without dual color, then simply delete this text and paste your own. Additionally, to create a dual style logo text similar to this one, just swap out these texts and modify the heading color in the style tab. Furthermore, if you want to change the red text color to yours, simply expand the custom CSS option under the advanced tab while the logo text element is selected. Now replace the CSS variable color value with your desired color and adjust the font weight property to your desired weight. Next, to customize the sidebar header menu text and icons, go to the navigator. Select the top icon list widget and make any necessary changes to suit your preferences. Please note, if you have imported either the landing page or dashboard version of the Elementor Pro sidebar header, leave the link field empty except for the hash symbol. And if you imported the multi-page website version, insert the appropriate page links in the link field. To obtain the page link, go to the Pages section in the WordPress dashboard and copy the link like this. Then paste it into the corresponding link field in the menu. To add a new menu item, Simply duplicate an existing menu and modify the text and icon as desired. And if you want to remove a menu, simply remove them as you do with the regular icon list. Similarly, you can customize the bottom icon list in the same way with the exception of this text field, which contains an HTML code snippet for this dark mode toggle button. Next, if you want to use this menu as a scroll to top button, then add this ID here and change the text and icon accordingly. To hide anything from the bottom section, go to the Advanced tab and expand the Custom CSS section. Now to hide the entire bottom section, simply uncomment this code block. And for hiding this scroll to top button and dark mode switch, simply uncomment these two code blocks respectively. Next, if you want to hide the footer section of your web page, Simply open the jQuery code snippet and uncomment this code block. Now, let's see how you can change the color theme of this Elementor sidebar header to match the color theme of your website. To change the color theme, simply follow along with me.
Folks, it's important to note that all versions of our pre-made sidebar header are already fully responsive and require no additional work. However, if you wish to make changes to the templates in responsive mode, it's crucial to temporarily disable the reload function on page resize, which is located at the bottom end of the jQuery code snippet. This function reloads the page whenever the window is resized, causing the Elementor editor to come out from the responsive mode. To make adjustments in responsive mode whether on your header or on the page where you have set to display our Elementor sidebar header, open the jQuery code snippet, scroll down to the bottom end, comment out this block of code responsible for reloading the page on resize, and save the changes. Now, refresh your Elementor editor window and make the desired responsive changes. After completing the edits, don't forget to remove the comment from the window reload function, save your changes and you're done. Finally, we have successfully customized our newly imported Elementor sidebar header. Now, let's set the display conditions and make it live on our website. To set the display condition, expand the drop-up menu of the publish button and click on the display conditions. Once you click on the same, then this pop-up will appear. Using this pop-up you can decide where your sidebar header to show up. For example, if you want this header to appear across the entire site, simply click on this button, then select the entire site from the drop-down menu, and finally click on this button. For the time being, let's just add this header to a demo landing page, so let's select the singular from the first drop-down, select the page from the second drop-down, and in the third drop-down, Search and select the page where you want to show your Elementor sidebar header. By the way, if you want to show this header in more than one location, you can do so by clicking on this button and adding a new condition. Now, click this button to save the changes and close this pop-up window. Finally, click the Publish button to publish the Elementor sidebar header and make it live on our website. To ensure the correct functioning of the Elementor header sidebar on our website, we will need to take a few more steps on the page where we have set it to display. Let's first do it on the landing page where we have set to display Elementor sidebar header version 1. To enable the scroll to view functionality, open the same page in the Elementor editor where you have set Elementor sidebar header version 1 condition to show on. Now. Select each section of the page and assign it the same IDs as mine. This will allow you to link to that section from the menu in the header. Just make sure to keep the SBH section keywords consistent and increase the number at the end of the ID for each new section. For instance, I have 8 menu items, I will add an ID with the name SBH section 1 in the hero section, SBH section 2 in the about us section, and so on until SBH section 8. Here make sure not to change the ID format, otherwise, your menu will not work properly. Now, the last but most important things to keep in mind so that your header works properly. First, don't turn on the stretch section toggle switch in any section. Second, select hidden from the overflow dropdown in every section. And third, make sure to page layout should be selected to elemental full width. That's it. Just preview your landing page to see everything in action. Next, to connect the Elementor sidebar header version 2 with your dashboard page, make sure to first edit each section. After that, set the height to minimum height, the height value should be 100 VH, and add the section IDs as mine.
Let's preview our dashboard page to see everything in action. Next, to connect the Elementor sidebar header version 3 with your multi-page website, go to the Pages tab in the WordPress dashboard. Copy the relevant page link. Go back to the header editor page and paste the same links within the relevant menu link field as earlier described. To enable the scroll to top button on your multi-page website sidebar header, open each page of the menu using the Elementor page editor and add the same ID to the topmost section's ID field as I do. Now that you've been thoroughly guided on how to customize our ready-made Elementor sidebar header template, if you have already purchased the template from our Gumroad shop, there's no need to continue watching the tutorial. If you haven't yet purchased the template, now is the time to do so. You can find the purchase link in the video description and in the pinned comment. However, if you prefer to create everything from scratch, stay tuned for the next section of the video where I'll show you how to do just that. To create this Elementor sidebar header, go to the WordPress dashboard. Then hover over the Templates tab, and click on the Theme Builder option. Now click on the header menu on the left side of the screen. To create a new header, simply click on the Add New link in the top right corner. Once you will click on the same link, then this pop-up window will appear, simply close this pop-up. Now, take a section. Let's call it the main wrapper section. While the main wrapper section is selected, go to the layout tab. Set the content width to full width. Column gap to no gap. Height fit to screen. Column position to stretch. And overflow to hidden. Next, switch to the style tab. And set the background color as mine. Now switch to the Advanced tab and expand the Custom CSS field. Now here we need to input some custom CSS for the main wrapper section. Don't worry if you're not familiar with coding. I have provided code snippet download links along with a template in the video description and in the pinned comment. Simply download and extract the code snippet zip file to access the separate code snippet text files for different elements. Once you have the code snippet for the main wrapper section, paste it into the custom CSS field. 
Next, expand the advanced options and set the top and bottom padding values to 30 pixels and the left and right padding values to 10 pixels. Finally, select the column within the main wrapper section and set the vertical align to space between. This will evenly distribute the elements within the column, creating a clean and organized header. Next, insert an inner section within the main wrapper section. Let's call it the top inner section. Within this top inner section, delete one column to create a single column inner section. While the top inner section is selected, go to the layout tab and set the vertical align to space between. Now insert an image, an icon, a heading, a search form, and an icon list within the top inner section. Now let's rename our newly added widgets one by one so that we can identify them easily. Next, select the logo image element and insert your logo image into it. Make sure your logo image is either in transparent PNG or in SVG format and recommended dimensions are 100 pixels by 100 pixels. Now make the logo center aligned, then switch to the style tab, set the width to 100%, and adjust the logo height as you like. Next, switch to the advanced tab, set the width to inline auto, and enter the exactly same class as mine. Finally, Expand the custom CSS field and paste the custom CSS for the logo image element. Next, select the toggle icon one element and insert a menu icon as you like. Now switch to the style tab, change the primary color and adjust the icon size as you wish. After that, switch to the advanced tab, set the width to inline auto and enter the same class as mine. Next, expand the responsive options and turn on the hide on mobile switch. After that, expand the custom CSS option and paste the custom CSS for the toggle icon one element. Now, select the logo text element and change the logo text to your desired text. Now, align the text to the left to match the logo. Next, switch to the Style tab and change the text color and typography as desired. Now, switch to the Advanced tab, set the width to Inline Auto, Position to Absolute, Horizontal Orientation to the left, Horizontal Offset as you like, Vertical Orientation to the top, Vertical offset as you like, and enter the same class as mine. Next, expand the custom CSS option, and paste the custom CSS of the logo text element. Now, select the search form, and resize it to your liking. Next, switch to the style tab, and make the adjustments as I do. After that, switch to the Advanced tab, unlink, and set the top margin to 20 pixels, and the rest should be zero. Now, enter the same class as mine in the CSS Classes field. Finally, expand the custom CSS option, and paste the custom CSS for the search form. Next, select the top icon list element, and add as many navigation menus as you want.
Next, switch to the Style tab, and make the adjustments as I do. Now, switch to the Advanced tab, and enter the same class as mine in the CSS Classes field. Next, expand the Custom CSS option, and paste the Custom CSS for the top icon list. Finally, replace the CSS variable color value with your own primary color hex value, to ensure that the header matches seamlessly with the rest of your website's branding and color scheme. Next, insert another section within the main wrapper section. Let's call it the bottom inner section. Within this bottom inner section, delete one column to create a single column inner section. While the bottom inner section is selected, go to the layout tab, and set the vertical align to space between. Now insert an icon list and an HTML widget list within the bottom inner section. Now let's rename our newly added widgets one by one so that we can identify them easily. Now, select the bottom icon list element, and add two list items only. The first one should be for either a login button or a scroll to top button, and the second one should be for a dark mode toggle switch. Now, copy the styles from the top icon list element, and paste them onto the bottom icon list. This will ensure that the bottom icon list has a similar appearance to the top icon list. Now, all of the style from the top icon list has been copied to the bottom icon list including the CSS class and custom CSS. However, since the bottom icon list needs to have a different CSS class and custom CSS, the existing class and custom CSS must be replaced with the specific ones belonging to the bottom icon list. To do so, switch to the Advanced tab, and replace the existing class with the class as mine. Now, expand the Custom CSS option, and replace the existing CSS with the bottom icon list custom CSS. For the time being, we will use the first item for the scroll to top button, so expand the first list item, enter the text, change the icon, and enter the exact same ID as mine. Now let's create our dark mode toggle switch. To create the dark mode toggle switch, expand the second list item of this bottom icon list, and paste the HTML code snippet of the dark mode toggle switch button within the text field. Now, change the icon as you wish. After that, select the jQuery code snippet HTML element from the navigator, and paste the jQuery code within the HTML code snippet input field. Now that we've almost finished the Elementor sidebar header creation, there's only one thing left to do, that is creating a header toggle button for mobile devices, because this toggle button will be hidden on mobile devices, so we will need to create a separate header toggle button for mobile devices. To do so, take a new section. Let's call it the mobile toggle button section. Next, switch to the advanced tab, and enter the same value as mine in the Z index field. Now, expand the custom CSS option, and paste the custom CSS for the mobile toggle button section. Next, copy the toggle icon 1 element from the main wrapper section. Then, paste it in the mobile toggle button section, and rename it to toggle icon 2. While the toggle icon 2 is selected, switch to the advanced tab, set the padding to 4 pixels, position to fixed, horizontal orientation to the right, horizontal offset 0 pixels, vertical orientation to the top, vertical offset 0 pixels, and enter the same class as mine. Now expand the responsive option, hide it on desktop and tablet devices, 
as well as show it on mobile devices. Next, expand the custom CSS option and replace the existing CSS with the toggle icon to custom CSS. Now, let's customize our Elementor sidebar header for tablet and mobile devices, but before that make sure to comment out this bottom jQuery function, because this function will reload your editor once you will toggle the responsive mode tool, and you will automatically come out from responsive mode. Once the customization for tablet and mobile devices is finished, simply uncomment the same window resize function to reactivate it. Now that we have successfully completed responsive customization of our Elementor sidebar header, let's add a divider for aesthetic purpose in between the top icon and bottom icon list. To create a divider, select the bottom inner section. Go to the Style tab. Expand the Border option. Set the border type solid. Unlink, and set the top border width to 1 pixel. The rest should be 0 pixels, and set the border color that enhances the overall look of your design. Finally, click on the Publish button, and set the display conditions as previously explained. That's all, we have successfully created our Elementor sidebar header from scratch. Folks, I just wanted to let you know that it took me almost 50 hours to make this video for you, so please like and subscribe, it will only take you 2 seconds, and if you want to purchase Elementor Pro, please consider purchasing through my affiliate link given in the video description. The price of the product will be the same, whether you buy through my link or directly, but buying through my link will support this channel. At the same time, if you have any problems, please let me know in the comment down below. Thank you so much for watching, I will see you next time.